I welcome you all. <clears throat> Today I am going to begin with the macroeconomics and today I will introduce uh, to you about the objectives of microeconomic <coughs> policy and the instrument which the government or any nation can use to attain those objectives. <coughs> You may recall that in the beginning of the this course, we made a distinction between microeconomics and macroeconomics. So when we are looking at the individual component of an economy, like the behavior of an individual consumer, behavior of an individual producer, or behavior of a particular market, we are dealing with microeconomics. And when we try to look at the aggregate activities of all consumers, all producers, not one price, the price of a particular commodity or services, rather we look at the general level of prices, then we are in the domain of microeconomics. Microeconomics, uh, if you look at the history of macroeconomics, you know the uh, macroeconomics as a discipline developed after the depression of 1930s in its full-blown form. Whatever economics we had earlier, we, it was microeconomics. So when I discuss about fiscal policy, then I will briefly uh, describe about the development also. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is that I will, uh, will try to discuss the objectives and the instruments of macroeconomics policy. So as to provide you an overview of what we are going to discuss in fourth and fifth unit that consists of macroeconomic concepts. In fourth unit, we are going to discuss about the concept like national income, before that circular flow of economic activities. Uh, we'll discuss about two policies, mean uh, monetary and fiscal policy. Then in the, uh, we will go on to discuss about uh, inflation, economic growth, business cycles, uh, then uh, exchange determination, balance of payments. So uh, this is what we are going to discuss uh, in fourth and fifth unit together. So let us uh, start and try to understand what are the objectives and tools at the command of a nation are. So <clears throat> let's see what are those. Yeah. You know, there are certain objectives which every nation would like to achieve. When I say any nation uh, or any country for that matter, I'm not making distinction what is nation and country. And every nation, be it USA, be it India, be it Mongolia, be it any other country, there are certain objectives which every nation would like to achieve. And where these objectives are stated uh, in economic policy document, even in the speeches of political leaders, you know, uh, you may find that uh, in uh, So uh, these objectives are enunciated. So every nation would like to achieve. What are these objectives? The first objective, I'm mean, you know that in this uh, in this, this this first lecture, I'm avoiding the jargons. Otherwise, I we could have written with uh, starting with. Uh, so that is why instead of writing GDP, I have written output. Every nation would like to achieve high level of output accompanied by rapid growth. Not that the every nation would like to you know, attain high level, but it is not, it, this increase in output should not be once for all increase. Rather, there should be a tendency for the output to increase over a period of time. 
Now, the terminology to describe this is known as the national income or gross domestic product. That, to put it in the terminology of GDP, every nation would like to achieve high level of output. And, and this increase in output should be rapid. Rapid, when I say that the, this, the rate of how rapid is rapid may vary from you. Know, certain countries which have not got uh, achieve economic development, uh, then their growth may be the increase in output may be 10%, 12%. But those countries which have achieved very high level of economic growth, there the growth may be 1%, 2% maximum, or 3%. You know? But any stagnant output, you know, the, any nation which is facing a deceleration in output, is not a good sign. That is why one of the most important pointers about the health of economy is to ask the question, what has happened to the output? Whether output has increased or decreased. Like we talk about COVID and all that, you know, that because of there were deceleration, but I will discuss that uh, point also because, you know, sometimes the numbers are, you know, reeled off that we have attained, attained this much growth but uh, there are uh, something which is missing there. Unless we understand the context, uh, we will not be able to. So this idea, this uh, measure of output, uh, we can know about the growth in GDP or the national income. Now, simply put, GDP is the explanation detail will come later on when I discuss about the national income is the aggregate money, money, money value of all goods and services produced in economy during the given period of time. So there are various goods which are produced from pin to aeroplane. When we sum up the value of all those goods and services in the economy, we arrive at total output in the economy, irrespective of uh, whether they, the, it is car or like or aeroplane or fighter jet or number of in, so it is like aggregate activity in the economy. Some emanate from agriculture, some from manufacturing. Function. So discuss. I will discuss the detail <coughs> later on. So uh, the the first important objective is to attain high level of economic growth, and this growth uh, should be spread over a period of time. Then another important objective is employment one of the main plank in election uh, that, you know, what is the use of growth? Economy is growing by 10%, 12%, but if it is not generating employment, if it leading to increase in unemployment, then, then the big question mark is here, that whether this growth is science empl employment or growth is not leading to generation of employment, then, the, it may be uh, growth which may not benefit the society at large. Maybe certain section, certain strata of the society may benefit. So that is why this growth should be should result in generation of employment. If it does not result in generation of employment, then the because you know the then uh, the then the growth strategy may be questioned. And you know that any economy, any nation which have got a very large army of unemployed youth is not a good sign. You know, uh, in certain countries, if like, you know, there are certain, le certain level of unemployment which will be there, uh, like in US and other six, seven percent, uh, you know, it's called natural level of employment. Because there are certain transitions taking place, you know, some people are leaving jobs, joining the other, if even workforce is there, then maybe that because of certain uh, activities, they may withdraw for some time. That is why, uh, so uh, there might be voluntary unemployment. They would not like to work. So, but the moment in India, for example, you understand the huge army of unemployed youth. You know, not only that we are, we are not able to generate employment, but there is a backlog, uh, huge backlog. Uh, uh, of unemployed employment, uh, unemployed youth. So growth should result in empl gener employment generation. Those who are willing, able, able and willing 
to work, they should get a job. And uh, it, it does not mean that 100% employment, but I said that there will be some level of unemployment that is called natural level of unemployment. Uh, maybe cyclical, maybe some, sometimes, you know, because of the fluctuation, some workers are laid off, but it's a temporary phenomenon, not a perennial position of unemployment. Uh, like. Then, even if a nation is able to attain high level of economic growth, and uh, this is producing employment, but at the same time, prices start rising. So that is why it should be accompanied by stable prices. Stable prices mean that uh, the, what we call uh, in terminology, inflation should be low. That is a rise in general level of prices should be a moderate level. Uh, not that the prices uh, are you know, rising by 10, 15% like what we call overheating you know you are able to generate uh, output employment but prices are also rising very fast when prices start rising very fast then the, it becomes very, very problematic for the nation because all the efforts will be directed <clears throat> towards uh, you know containing of a rise in price so if growth and other thing may be affected because of the government would like to contain curb the rise in price and uh, so uh, like uh, 14 15 percent in india for a very long time it has to be like rbi has a mandate in india that we should aim at uh, four percent plus minus two you know six or you know is inflation targeting is there. that is why mahangai or uh, the, uh, the inflation is a big concern and you know that if prices start rising then government has to use all its uh, uh, measures uh, monetary fiscal and other to curb it otherwise uh, if it is uh, if it is allowed to uh, run them up then it will create problem for the growth and other things and there are various consequences of uh, in price in price which we'll discuss uh, in detail in inflation what are the consequences and then another important objective which any nation would like to attain is healthy balance of payments. You know, no nation is in, uh, is uh, lives in an is an island, uh, lives in a tarki. It has got relationship with the outside world uh, through export and import, through uh, flow of capital. Uh, I like. So that is why uh, that uh, relationship, that transaction with the other countries are recorded in what is known as balance of payment accounts. Balance of payment record how much uh, uh, we are exporting, how much we are importing, how much foreign investment we are receiving, how much the, we uh, we are you know there, how much we are you know investing abroad. Uh, so because export uh, uh, if a country is exporting more than import, it means that the uh, this inflow of foreign exchange is higher than the outflow of foreign exchange. So, <clears throat> so that is why uh, balance of payment account is very, very important. And uh, if a country is having persistent current account deficit, that is it's ex exporting less than import, its import is higher than, so it means that outflow of foreign exchange is much higher than the inflow of foreign exchange. Then uh, unless it is uh, supplemented by it is uh, 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 you know by the flow of foreign capital, nation may face problem. You know how how to pay uh, the import bill. So uh, uh, many of you were not born in 1991. I think all of you hardly maybe uh, when the financial crisis erupted in, in India when Manmohan Singh was the prime minister and Narasimha was the uh, prime minister. In the 1991 financial uh, crisis in India erupted because of this balance of payment. Our foreign exchange reserve had dwindled to a level which was barely sufficient to pay three weeks import. You know, it means now we are very having a very healthy balance of uh, uh, foreign exchange reserve. So what we have to do if a nation default in making a payment, you know, in foreign exchange then uh, we have to import or we have to transport gold to bank of england we have to borrow money to pay for our uh, imports 
so that uh, trigger uh, was was become account of the the problem on foreign sector front that is caused by balance of payment crisis now these are some of the objectives which every nation would like in addition to this there are other objectives which also will be there like uh, the because when you are achieving high level of economic growth then uh, employment generation is there restructuring poverty reducing inequality in kind some other measures like you know food you know, health a long list of objectives are there but any nation which is not able to attain high level of economic growth or increase in output may not be able to fulfill any objective uh, because you know if the growth is <coughs> stunted or growth is decelerated or there is a decline in growth then uh, objectives may be <coughs> so let us uh, go through once again these objectives which will be of course taken up in detail <clears throat> the first objective is that every nation uh, uh, would like to attain high level of output uh, and uh, this should be, uh, this in this increase in output should be should be a persistent increase should be a sustained increase should not be once for all increase that is one time increase A sustained increase in output, and in other words, sustained growth in GDP, and this increase in should result in generation of income are low unemployment, and attaining uh, these objectives, it should uh, be attained as somebody uh, can check it. Who is this? please mute yourself sada saad zafar okay sir he is now on but i think it should not be conveyed i think there should be it's not a big task like that you do not understand the thing that you should mute yourself okay this disturb you know that unnecessary and noise in explanation and noise in understanding also you know noise is some something not exactly this noise but also affect the understanding so and should be uh, uh, and as i said that high level of uh, growth in uh, our increase in output uh, followed by generation of employment and should be at moderate level of rise in price that should not stoke rise in uh, inflation as well as a healthy balance of payment that is the the foreign uh, the transaction with the out should be healthy healthy what i mean healthy we will be able to understand it when i discuss about balance of payments account balance that we should have enough foreign exchange reserve to pay for our imports other objectives that i said that other objectives are also there uh, so but these are the main objectives which every nation would like to attain. now the next question is that if every nation would like to attain these objectives what are the tools available what are the instruments available the first tool which government can use to attain these objective is known as monetary policy monetary policy tries to attain these objectives by increasing or decreasing supply of money in the economy and it is conducted by the reserve bank of india with the details of course will be taken up uh, after national income for instance if prices are rising fast and government the rbi wants rbi is a government bank of contain prices then rbi will curb supply of money and uh, since rbi operates through banking system by taking because it has got various instrument like bank rate open market operation uh, the various so crr slr yes yes so so by varying these either uh, uh, the money supply can be increased or decreased so government the rbi can use this system to contain uh, the rise in price or if the rbi want to uh, promote economic growth 
then uh, easy monetary policy that is the uh, the uh, the rate of interest can be brought down and uh, and that can make the borrowing cheaper and that can lead to uh, you know more investment and more output employment and so on and so forth. so rbi is monetary policy one policy. depending upon the economic condition uh, the rbi will increase supply of money uh, using a set of tools which it has at its disposal and either will decrease supply of money then in addition to monetary policy government has also got a tool which is known as fiscal policy fiscal policy is implemented through budget recently uh, the government uh, announced budget budget is a statement uh, of receipt and expenditure how government is going to get revenue through tax and non tax and how it is going to spend money so by by using budget uh, fiscal policy uh, fiscal policy is a broad term uh, so by for example uh, the unemployment uh, growth is uh, declining so what the government can do government can bring down the taxes and uh, increase expenditure uh, so that uh, more growth is generated so depending upon uh, the economic condition government can use Uh, uh the taxes and expenditure either taxes can be increased taxes are two type direct taxes income tax corporation tax and indirect taxes which are commodity taxes so either can be increased or decreased uh so uh, our expenditure public expenditure is government expenditure uh can be increased or decreased details i will take up uh, now these are two main tools uh, of mon- uh, monetary and fiscal policy so government can use these two tools to uh, attain high level of output generate employment and contain prices and to attain healthy balance of payment but sometime it happens that these uh, tools uh, these instruments they fall short because in certain extraordinary situations certain drastic steps are needed so in that case government uses a policy which is known as income policy we hardly you know rarely it is used income policy is a use of sometime you know the government you know issue certain directives uh especially in the case when prices are rising very fast and monetary and fiscal policy are not able to make dent on rising price so what the government can do government can issue directives that uh, the salaries wages will not increase a uh, dividend will not be paid because dividend uh, the company pays dividend then uh, people get income uh, uh, and they can spend when they spend more that further uh, rise prices may rise so so government may issue uh, directives and in india government has used in 60s and later on that to work that the government curb the distribution of tax uh, dividend and and also uh, issued directives uh, that uh, the salaries and other will not be increased because because if salaries are increased then uh, you know the companies will add to the cost uh, if they, they are paying more to the workers they will add to and then further rise so as i said that hardly nowadays uh, the you know the income policy but in extraordinary situation that directives can do so by and large we find that government uses monetary and fiscal policy uh, to uh, attain these objectives so that is why if you want to have a score card of health of nation uh, then these questions should be asked about the output gdp about employment about the price rise inflation about balance of payment and other thing also for example in recent time inequality in income and wealth has also become a issue economies are right you know attaining very high level of economic growth but the gap between rich and poor has widened over the years or she as i said that employment generation where employment is generated whether the the number of people who are poor remain same or if it is not resulting in provision of health care or other facilities or the other indicators of the life so other objectives are also there but an economy which is not able to attain high growth rate high level of growth rate you know uh, we find difficult to attain other objectives 
like a grow, output is like is, is the income of a nation. If income is not growing, see attainment of other objectives may also become difficult. So this is a very brief about uh, what are the instrument and objective of monetary policy and details uh, uh, will be discussed in your course. All these like monetary fiscal policy we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss about our output in national income, uh, various concepts. We are going to discuss about inflation. We are going to discuss about the balance of payment and exchange determination, which is an important uh, factor in affecting uh, the so many things. You know, there are linkage between exchange rate and uh, various other economic variables. So uh, this is an introduction. And tomorrow, I'm going to discuss about one concept, uh, which is uh, uh, the another uh, introductory concept in macroeconomics uh, that will enable you to understand what are the various uh, components of macroeconomy, uh, which we call the uh, uh, the sectors in economy, like you know, uh, uh, it is like anatomy, you know, various parts of the economy. And then we will discuss about the uh, the national income and other concepts. So I stop for today uh, just uh, because I have to wind up, I have to attend a meeting. So tomorrow I will meet you at the same time and we'll continue further. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you so much. Sure. You can note down, you can ask tomorrow.